Hello everyone, uh, my name is Nemanja Stojanovic. Uh, I'm a mathematician, but I work as a software engineer in Continental. So pretty much uh, topic is about procedural regeneration of 3D models of trees using Python. So before we start, I have to explain what is a procedural generation of uh, procedural content generation. Uh, so in uh, 3D graphics, it's necessary to invest a lot of time to generate 3D models. Uh, so usually it's necessary at least one day for animators or modelers to make a 3D model. And it's actually quite difficult to change it after that. It has fixed number of polygons, fixed uh, texture quality and so on. So idea is actually to I mean, fire them. I mean, <laughs> make an application that will do their job fast. And you can modify that by using the application if it's possible in real time. So I have to show you at least one minute of application to, so you can see the output. So when, I, when the application is run, the graphic user is interface is created and a scene is prepared, uh, the terrain, the clouds and whatnot. And actually the whole application is written with Python. The graphical user interface is written with Python side and for image processing and actually generation of model NumPy and SciPy are used. And some overheads are overcome by using uh, JIT compilers like Namba or Cyton, where we actually convert Python code to C and compile it and use it as a dynamic library. So right now it doesn't work real time. Can I play it from here? Yes. It needs like a four second to generate the tree. Uh, after four seconds, it should be generated, but my graphic card on a laptop that video was made is kind of shitty, so leaves are generating during the calculation, so it looks something like that. Uh, all the modifications can be done in a graphical user interface, so automatically uh, image processing is calculated and uh, those uh, calculated images are put in a memory location so gra graphic card can find it and write a shader with it and actually find the UV maps and actually map it to the 3D model. Uh, so there are a lot of features there. I mean, it's not just procedural 3D generation, like there is a modification of lighting uh, and the whole scene. So pretty much that's it about the application. This is like two and a half months old. There is a lot of features now, but I didn't have time to make a, a new one. So to actually explain the application. Well, we first have to start with the mathematics because it's 3D graphics, like there is no other way. So there is a lot of linear algebra and numerical methods. So affine transformations are needed to actually move or change anything in 3D. So scaling, rotating and translating is actually necessary. And we can see right there we have three rotation matrices. So we can rotate our object uh, around X axis, apps, apps, Y axis and Z axis. So actually to do this rotation matrix, uh, uses, use this rotation matrices and do the matrix calculation, we use NumPy. So all the solutions are vectorized and broadcasting is imp uh, implemented as well. So this approach is quite awesome. I mean, it's quite fast, but inside of these uh, matrices, 2D matrices uh, in NumPy, we have obviously scene and cause functions. Uh, calculating this with NumPy is obviously an overhead because there is an abstraction over abstraction and NumPy is awesome for vectorization methods and so this will be quite fast by using the actual Python, but we don't want to deal with actually any mathematics using the Python. We use NumPy, SciPy, or some other method that will, be, that will compile this. So the first approach is actually use the JIT compiler, such as Numba, that kind of gives a small, amount, small boost in performance. The second option is use a Cyton. And obviously the best option is the simplest option is actually use the NumPy, calculate these rotation matrices for 
pretty much argument can be from 0 to 360. We can rotate it, it for using the angles from 0 to 360, uh, create binary files, and reuse it, pretty much load it in an object, and use it while we are generating our object. So this kind of sounds complex, but NumPy actually gives us this feature. I mean, all the NumPy arrays and 2D matrices can be saved as binary files uh, with the name, with extension of MPy. So it kind of parses the data and load it, load it in a program like really fast. And to actually modify the whole model that's contain that actually contains like hundreds or thousands of branches or leaves and whatnot, uh, we need a transformation matrix. And at this state, we kind of get into numerical methods and solving a system of equations. This can all be solved with SciPy. I mean, SciPy is extremely fast, but uh, in our situation, we when we approach a 3D graphics, everything should be vectorized. So we kind of have to implement all the SciPy functions by using the NumPy and be careful not to use any overhead of using uh, for loops. So that's a basic about mathematics. To actually uh, generate a 3D model, L systems are used. It's actually extremely simple like uh, thing. It's uh, actually overwriting a string. So if we start with some character B, and we have two distributions, like if we, uh, character A be, will be converted or rewritten to string of two characters A and B, and character B will be rewritten to character A. So if we start with B at the top, in first iteration, it will be converted to A by using the second distributions, then A will be converted to A and B by using the first distribution, and so on. So if we start with just uh, some basic string and use distribution methods with uh, some iterations, we at some point generate like a massive string that can be used for something. So the idea is actually when we generate this string, actually make a logic. So s every character should do something. So on the right, we see an example. So if uh, big F represents, okay, draw a line on the screen and minus means uh, turn left by 90 degrees and uh, minus means turn right by 90 degrees. We can see by a simple string there, we can actually generate some kind of image. So if we play with these basic L systems, the what we can use, uh, there is a turtle graphics library in Python. This is generated with it. So like idea is actually we can take off a turtle that has a marker on its tail that actually works on the screen. So when we play with the C++ system, we can generate fractals and some awesome, I mean, 2D patterns. So if you go in depth with it uh, and actually try to make our system to represent something, we can create some simple like plants or whatever. So at this point, it's actually a parametric L system. Uh, so <coughs> every time we run this script, it will generate the exactly the same result. So at this point, we should implement some kind of stochastic of raw or random variables. So we kind of have a, a similar, similar image, but not exactly the same as the previous state. So on the left example, we have two distributions. Like, it's not necessary to understand now what every character means. But uh, distribution two and three can happen with a chance of uh, 50%. So if we do just that and use 10 iterations on the NL system, we can generate, generate these six images that are completely different. And on the right side, uh, we show the implementation of vector of tropism that actually make uh, branches elastic or make them move toward the ground. At this point, uh, it's necessary to calculate normals. Normals are actually calculated as a vector product of vector products. The 2D graphics is simple. I mean, it's just vector product of two vectors, but it's 3D, it actually gets more complicated because every branch is not just not the line. It's actually smoothed combination of polygons it's made of. So in this case, every branch just needs to 
one normal to be calculated and 3D needs hundreds or thousands. So uh, we actually have to use absolutely everywhere NumPy and vectorization and broadcasting. And actually to do anything about procedure generation, it kind of has to have some connection with Perlin noise. The antique of Perlin noise is just uh, the cloud image. It's continuous and you can think of a uh, black pixel as actually uh, values zero and white pixels values 255. So it's some kind of a range. So we can make from parallel noise absolutely everything. I mean, if we go through it with some kind of scene wave, we can get generate the procedurally textures of a tree. If we use it as a height map that wi where white is a big height and black is low, we can generate this kind of uh, terrain images. This is generated all with Python and PyOpenGL. Uh, we can generate cloud images or whatever, I mean procedure, fire, so it has a lot of application. So at first state to actually implement the Perlin noise, we need loops and loops are like overhead. So idea was uh, how to implement Perlin noise with zero loops, at least one, but if we can just not use any. So to generate Perlin noise, we need seconds. We don't, we don't have seconds, even in C or C++. So while at first I wasn't able to generate Perlin noise with just vectorization, there was like uh, alternatives to it. First was false formation algorithm. It's extre extremely simple. It's just a gray image. We cut it with a random vector. On one side, we add values. On the other side, we remove values. And if we repeat iterations, we kind of get image that re that looks like Perlin noise, but it's not. Uh, problem with this uh, uh, this approach is actually it's expensive as Perlin noise. But the second approach is the diamond squared algorithm. It's awesome. I mean, we start with a polygon and then we uh, use a middle point to actually move the if we think of it as a terrain to move it up or down, and then we divide that to more polygons and so on. So actually it's implemented in the program, as you can see on the terrain, it's implemented uh, to actually tweak the trunk of a tree, to actually represent the roots or how the tree grows from the ground. Uh, so you can kind of play, kind of play with its seed, so it kind of moves the natural way uh, trunk of a tree. And first application while using Autodesk Maya. So like functionality is used in Maya, but all the calculation is done with Python. Is actually by using cylinders. Uh, I mean, every bunch is a cylinder. So it kind of was extremely simple. But uh, I mean, this is bad result. Like at some point we have to make all the branches smooth. So at this point we have to implement interpolation methods. And interpolation methods are usually implemented, I mean, for variables, and we need it here for arrays or matrices, uh, what would be extremely cool. So we, don't, we cannot use SciPy, it doesn't give us that, so we kind of have, again, implement the SciPy functions by using the NumPy. Uh, and even though uh, implementing these interpolation methods uh, give us the cool results, we kind of have an overhead. I mean, in computer graphics, if we uh, grow two branches from one, obviously in there will be some intersection where that will contain polygons that will be used for calculation in computer games, in visual effects or whatever. And it will contain textures. So it kind of takes your RAM and uh, memory of a graphic card and you kind of have to remove that. So idea was somehow to make some intersections on uh, axis uh, and recreate the branching system so that all the rebranching is actually deleted and generated a new model of polygons that actually doesn't have an intersection. Like this ob obviously uh, has a massive overhead of controlling the UV maps uh, actually controlling the maps that the textures is actually applied on a 3D model. 
and yes, some uh, there is a result on a second picture. It's kind of better than the first one. And the next problem is obviously leaves. So to generate leaves, we need massive amount of calculation of normals uh, on these branches. So again, if we just make these branching objects in a row in a memory, like uh, vectorization is obviously like do a massive boost of performance. And then again, we can use a parallelization here. This is multi-threaded. So actually generation of leaves is vectorized and multi-threaded. So it's, it, I mean, it's a fragment of a second. And there is obviously a lot of options to one leaf should be a bit darker, or second leaf should be a bit bigger and so on. So there is a lot of combinations. So to be a realistic, make it realistic, it kind of everything has to be different. So conclusion of this would be that actually computer graphics, everything, everything can be done with Python. I mean, C++, C++ has a monopole right now in making uh, game engines and whatever. And in this state, I mean, it can be easily, uh, it's now four or five seconds to generate a tree. It can be easily modified that it works in real time. And plus, uh, if we don't take leaves into consideration, this is all done on one process. There is no multi-threaded system here. So if we do all the calculation with NumPy, SciPy, we actually don't need like deal. We don't have to deal with C++. What is actually a massive boost of uh, motivation when you can actually change your application during a weekend, like 50% of your application. In C++, you need like months. So yeah. That's basically it. <laughs> so, any questions? Yes. Uh, I have a question regarding export of the model. Uh, in practical applications, I've been using 3D models to make actual physical models. Can this uh, solution of yours be used to speed up a production of, say, uh, an architectural design or something like that? Because well generating a tree, uh, as you said, takes a lot of time. If we use the fractal model, it will be much faster. But the question is whether can I export the model into something that a 3D printer could use? Yes, well, the whole of this application is implemented in Autodesk Maya. So actually we can use, I mean, if they just used escape in the video, you could see like it's actually the different application. So scripting is actually done there. It has all the features that Automas Autodesk Maya gives, like you can export in any other way. So the idea was to actually implement everything is possible, not use the low level like uh, commands of Maya, so it can be ported to Unity or Unreal Engine or whatever in like days on weeks. So that's pretty much it. Thanks. What made you start with it? Because it's not really common thing to generate anything in 3D except use the program for 3D. Yeah, well, I was in a college of mathematics. And when I was like third or fourth year, I figured out like we are not going to learn anything. And it was applied mathematics. And I didn't know to apply anything anywhere. I mean, I don't know anyone who does know to apply. I mean, not even college professors. So I kind of went into computer graphics because it has a lot of mathematics. I mean, simulations of fire and whatever, the mathematics and physics. So it kind of was like introduction to that. And I mean, that's how I learned to actually program. So you, would you say it was a challenge? Yes. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I have some question regarding uh, how did you solve uh, the problem of normals on the cylinders and uh, leaves? Are they generated as a polygon made of uh, multiple triangles or just uh, uh, some ordinary planes? Well, actually, to generate a calculate a normal, we need just a vector product. 
uh, and we have the data about all the polygons and all the vertices in every object. I mean, all the branches are objects. So there is an attribute of a list that actually saves pre-calculated normals of every vertex, uh, every vertex that's cal calculated just as a vector product. And about leaves, it actually can be just one polygon. It can be divided, like subdivision can go over the x and y axis. It can actually have a tropism vector, so it can be like, I mean, pulled over the ground and whatever. There are a lot of options. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you. <laughs>